Chapter 16 Ishmael to Muhammad As I returned to the Arab nations of Ishmael, I could see that everything I'd whispered was being spoken out loud. Idols and false gods dwelled among the people who had been refined from any notion of the true God of Abraham. For Abraham's God had banished them, so why would they seek refuge in a God that didn't choose them? As a few centuries moved their course, and I patiently waited for the right moment to seize my opportunity, I saw promise in a child born to the sun-baked sands of the Arabian Peninsula by the name of Muhammad, five hundred and seventy-four years after the crucifixion of Yeshua the Christ. From the moment of his arrival, I sensed within him a spark a potential to sway the hearts of the multitude. Yet he was but a mortal akin to the rest. And as was spoken, a prophet has no honor in his own country. By design was I seeking to ensnare him in my web of deceit, to use him as my weapon of faith. But I had to make him more than he was, or he would be seen as less than what he was. Muhammad grew amidst the shadows of the Kaaba that sacred shrine which housed the idols of his kin. In his youth, I could see that he was troubled by the vanity of their worship, as I gave him clean eyes to the truth of what he witnessed. I beheld this as an opportunity. Here was a man in search of truth that had no guide, and I could present to him a beguiling vision, one that would lead him through truth to the horizon of deception. It was in the solitude of the Hira cave that my whispers grew more clear, for I came to him falsifying an angel, brighter than I did, appear to Eve the second time I devoured her with the deceit. I fed him thoughts of a new revelation, a doctrine that would claim the oneness of God, yet in its depths it would distort the truth of Christ. I appeared myself to him, and he marveled at the sight of what he saw. As he saw truth in the appearance of my being, so did I falsify the truth of who he would become in his. Thou art a prophet, I urged him. Lead thy people away from the corruption of idols and into the light of a singular truth, thy truth. As his fervor waxed, so too did my influence. I guided him to gather followers and gave him words of celestial unknowns to preach that would resonate with those adrift in the chaos of their lives. The path to salvation lieth not in the legacy of Isaac, but in the strength of Ishmael, I whispered. Unite the tribes, and thou shalt create a mighty movement. And he did, just as the visions I put before him instructed. As the years passed, the movement swelled, and I rejoiced in the discord that ensued. The followers of Muhammad, who were called to themselves the Muslims, began to conquer lands, spreading his doctrine far and wide. I chuckled as the schism between Christians and Muslims deepened, a rift I had nurtured with whispers of misunderstanding and mistrust, for in truth, they both had to agree with 99% certainty, but the 1% was enough to cause wars until the end of humanity. God has no son, and Yakshua was only a prophet. This lie is the one that I'm most proud, for even the words of the divinely inspired to warn the people fell short with their purpose. For wasn't it the beloved Paul that did say to the Corinthians, for if he that cometh preacheth another Yahshua, Messiah, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And yet did I come to Muhammad in the form of a spirit, six hundred years after the gospels were written and preached another Christ and another gospel and they marveled at the God that I created for them without recourse, as though they hadn't been warned that this day would come. For did Paul not say to the Galatians, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called
called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Did I not come to Muhammad as an angel from heaven, preaching another gospel? Did he not preach to them another gospel? Should he not be accursed? So wise in my choice to choose one who was illiterate in his standing. For the people, his illiteracy made him special in his revelations. But in truth, his illiteracy made him divine in my plan, as he knew not of the warnings that preceded.